All right. Well, how you doing? So this is day 18 of working from home. Um, the company I work for, we were one of the first ones in Seattle to start doing the working from home. So the entire company is actually working from home right now. We have been since the uh, since the third. So uh, we're actually looking at day 23, but don't don't include the weekends. So this is uh, one, two, three, day 18. Yeah, so um, it's gotten to be a pretty, pretty routine thing now. I get up, take a shower, get dressed like I normally would, go down the stairs, have a bowl of cereal, which is not normal because I haven't eaten cereal um, really uh, at all in the past 15, 20 years. I might have a bowl of cereal after you know, in the afternoon or in the evening or something like that as a snack. But uh, I've been having my Cheerios every morning, so um, it's kind of different. Grab my cup of coffee and then uh, walk upstairs uh, to what is actually my son's, my oldest son's bedroom, which I have commandeered uh, for this undertaking. And I'll actually, and yes, you're not seeing things goofy you're actually seeing that the walls are pink so you can actually see that I actually have everything I need here I have dual monitors my laptop and a printer so I have everything I need here to be able to keep doing my job which is nice because um, I take my job very seriously and I consider my job as a mission that I need to take care of these veterans and these veterans dogs. Uh, I'll check back in, in a little bit. This is going to be a daily thing. I'm going to do this every single day. I'm going to post it every single day. Talk to you later. Bye. Right now I'm actually in a video teleconference with all the executives from the company that I work for. Um, we've actually started doing this uh, once a week. Uh, which is good because it makes sure that we're staying in contact with everybody and, and getting questions asked that uh, that need to be asked and answered. So, um, that's the exec team. So, right now I'm doing that and then uh, I'm actually working while I'm doing that. All right, well, I just got off work uh, a couple minutes early. Um, I have a virtual telehealth uh doctor's appointment here in a couple of minutes so get to do that yay never done that before this will be kind of fun so right now i'm just waiting for the doctor to show up see uh, all right well that was fun i kind of like talking to my doctor he's a good guy let's go let the dogs out uh oh uh oh who's that who's that who's that Hmm. Peanut, come on. That's a good girl. I've got this GoPro mount. And we're going to see if I can't attach this bad boy to the back of the... Oh, it's kind of hard to do this one-handed. All right. I'm gonna see if I can't do this or put this on the back of the instrument cluster on the bike itself. So, oh hey. So out into the garage we go. Woo, color balance. All right. I don't know if this is gonna work the way I want it to work. But I will say this, 100% uh, gloves. I'm actually gonna do a little review on these. <clears throat> um, damn, love these. But that's later to come. And this is not a sponsored video or anything, so just get your panties out of a wad. So, what I'm thinking is putting that right there but maybe but maybe something like that um, I don't know. 
Let's see if I can put you down. All right. So I got my RAM out here for my cell phone. And my thought was, put that there. And then maybe, and then maybe putting that like that. And then, so yeah, that's, I think that might actually work. And I'll just put that right there. And then I can actually get some footage of me riding and maybe even put the dead cat, put the dead cat on there as well. Now, the question is, do I want to permanently adhere this thing to, to the instrument cluster? Because once it's on there, pretty much doesn't come off from my understanding and I'm, I'm not real big on attaching things like that I don't know we'll figure it out I'm not going out riding today anyway but I can tell you this furnace has to start right when I'm recording of course it does I wonder if I've got 10 minutes for the footage yet oh um Hmm. Hmm. I don't know when that showed up, but whatever. Huh. Now I gotta bring this in. One hand. That's how you do that. What? What? Well, because my daily routine and my daily schedule has been kind of messed up, because I've been working from home, um, I keep forgetting to put the dishes away because I would normally come home, let the dogs out while the dogs are out doing their thing. I would come back over and do put the dishes away and reload and all that kind of stuff. Because I haven't been coming home, I just come downstairs. It just, it's not been registering that I need to do these things. So I got to do that. I got to get back into that routine. Are you going to follow me or are you not? Guess not. Going to, are you going to make me some chicken for dinner? Um, and I think I'm going to make the wife soup because she loves soup. So, I don't know if you guys like uh, cream and potato soup. Michelle loves cream and potato soup. What I'll do is I'll show you guys real quick how to make a kind of a cheater style cream of uh, potato soup. You're going to like this. All right. So I'm cheating this time. You only get one camera. But you'll be able to see the cutting board. Yeah. You know, you're probably asking yourself, why in the hell do you just put a towel down? Well, here, I'll show you. See this? It's kind of slides wiggly wally all over. Take a towel, fold it in half. Kitchen towel. Hey, look at that. Doesn't move. Good self. Pretty sharp blade. Then you come over to the ice box, or as uh, normal people call it, 
the refrigerator. In that old refrigerator, you're gonna grab a pepper, whatever color you want, doesn't matter. We're gonna grab a jalapeno right there, some onion. We got some leftover carrots here. Add a extra carrot. And because I forgot to take my cabbage, or not my cabbage, my celery, and put it into a piece of wet paper towel and wrap it up, we have fresh shot of the limper. Sad, sad, sad looking celery. <laughs> Don't laugh. All right, cut that off. Cut that part off. All right. I always keep a uh, yard waste bin right there. All right. So we're cutting up that celery. Now you can sit here and say, well, it's, you know, it's limp. It's not getting good. Da, 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 Whatever. It's still perfectly fine. It still tastes just like celery. A little flaccid. <laughs> I said flaccid. Now, there's probably some of you saying, you didn't shave your carrot, you didn't peel it. Why do you feel the need to peel a carrot? I mean, unless it's got hairs all over it. It's already been washed. Got washed at the farm. And it got pulled. So there's no need. I'm washing the damn carrot. Peeling the carrot again. Alright. Look at that. Just double the amount of carrots I have. Boom. Now you're probably looking at this going, how the hell did he do that? How did he get such perfectly cut little squares? It's real easy. Bam, 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 bam. Slide, make slices this way. Then, while the onion's cut in half, don't do it with this little tiny piece. Go this way. Go one, two, three. Make three lines across. And as you're chopping down, you'll get, well, this is towards the ends of it, but You'll get nice cuts. If Amberell were here right now or Gordon Ramsay, I'd probably be getting my ass chewed because my nut cuts are inconsistent. Yeah, whatever. This isn't a four-star restaurant. This is my wife's dinner. And it's a soup. So they're all going to get rendered down. Thicknesses are the same. So that is all that really matters. All right, now, because I know she likes her soup a little spicy, we're going to take one side of the jalapeno and leave it. We're going to take the other side and take the strawberry core and just take all that capsaicin and all those seeds and just pop them right into the yard waste bin. Boom! like that. All the slices are just that thick. Mm. I'm going to do the same right here to the side with the seeds. And as you're chopping, your seeds are going to get chopped. That's going to open those things up and release those oils. Those oils, that's where the flavor is going to come out. All right, so yeah, uh, red bell pepper. I'm going to take that bad boy and I'm going to cut just like that. Look at that, no seeds. Take out the baby, He 
Easy peasy. Lemon raspberry squeezy. All right. There you go. The vegetables are done. So we got some red carrot or red bell pepper. We got some jalapeno, onions, carrots, and celery. Three of these things are the Holy Trinity. If you know what that is, you're in good shape. I personally like using this pot. It's a good pot, it's a good size, but gonna get that flame going. Get that nice and hot. Well, that's getting nice and hot. And get Kirkland's finest 100% Italian extra virgin olive oil. We're gonna have some Costco garlic, not sponsored. Costco sea salt, not sponsored. Some red pepper flake and some black pepper. That pan's starting to get nice and warm. That drizzle in. Some EVOO. Into the magic pot, everything goes. I'm gonna let everything take a little dance. This is actually a really, really good way to buy some fairly cheap items and be able to make a pot of soup out of them and get a, get a couple of days out of it. Even for two people, you can make this make this work. All right, what's the first ingredient to add? Salt. Always, 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 always add salt. Second ingredient? Black pepper. Our third spice. Garlic powder. While that's doing that, I'm gonna let you in on the secret. The secret to really, really creamy, smooth potato soup or potato chowder, however you wanna call it. Pre-made mashed potatoes. You can either buy them at the store or take your leftovers, doesn't matter. Use your pre-made mashed potatoes and watch this, I'll show you. All right, look at that. Okay, gonna open up these potatoes, then drop it in. Start stirring and mixing it around. Get some half and half. Turn this heat back up just a little. This is where the soup starts coming together. Now, if you wanted, and if I really wanted to spend the time doing this, I would have chopped up some potatoes and parboiled them and then put them in here as well. Look at that. Cream of potato soup, right there. That's all there is to it, man. First rule in the kitchen, always taste your food. Oh, oh. Woo. oh, that's good. Oh, damn. That's good even without the cheese. Oh, did I forget to tell you? We're adding cheese. Now, me personally, I don't like using pre-shredded cheese. The reason why is because the outside is kind of dry and they spray it with stuff to keep it from clumping and sticking. So, it still tastes like cheese, still melts like regular cheese. Just. Not a good choice, but 
get a big old handful. It doesn't matter what kind you want. You can use sharp white, plain white, yellow, medium, doesn't matter. And you always have to make sure that you pay homage to the puppers, to the puppy god, and give them their sacrificial pieces of cheese. All right, can you see that? Yeah. They're waiting for more cheese. They're not getting it. To add a little bit of texture, I think, aside from the vegetables. Oh, got one minor ingredient. I'm gonna put some red pepper flake in there. Not too much. Just enough for a little color and a little flavor. When we went to taco time the other night and uh, she had a veggie soft taco and I had a chicken one. And then uh, we both got fries and if any of you know Pacific Northwest and taco time, their fries are tater tots. Take those, just give them rough chops, toss them right in there. So I chopped them up, I threw them in. It's just going to give a little bit of, a little bit of texture, a little bit of bite. The cheese is thickening up nicely. I think it's actually a little too thick. Always worry about that. I'm just going to toss a little milk in there just to cut it. Just a little. All right. So there you go. That is how you make easy cream of potato soup. Hope you enjoyed it. So we're going to, well, once she gets home, we're going to sit down and have some soup. I'm probably going to make myself some chicken um, and have a bowl of soup. And then we have an HOA meeting, and then uh, we're not doing anything the rest of the night. We're just going to relax. I'm going to work on this, and I'm going to post it. And I'll see you guys tomorrow. All right? Bye.